Hey folks, Josh here. This is a bit of a cold open. Just wanted to apologize in advance for the audio issues we had on this episode, and I think the next one. Uh, long story short, new microphone, figuring it out. I apologize, but I think we got it dialed in for a future episode, so don't give up. Welcome to Two Ball... Wait, what is it called again? Three, two, <laughs> one. Welcome to Two Brains, One Bottle. I'm Sean. I'm Josh. And tonight we are drinking Teeling Small Batch Whiskey. Irish whiskey, because what? Because it's almost St. Patrick's Day, with my terrible accent. And, uh, hey Sean. Yeah? What musical instrument did the show-off musician play his St. Patrick's Day tunes on? The show-off musician... Patrick's Day... Show off St. Patrick's Day. Irish. So let's see. Fiddle, harp. Where else can you go with it? Um, I'm blown past guitar drums. Because. You're going to hate me for this because it's probably oh, not even Irish. Oh, fuck. All right. The brag pipes. Oh. <laughs> That's Scottish, you fuck. I, I didn't write the joke, but it, if you'll, oh, you'll note, your joke. you'll note in parentheses, I wrote Scotland as a reminder of what the answer is. Fucking. I know. I'm sorry. Okay. Boo hiss. Boo hiss. All right. We bring that back. Boo hiss. But sure. Why not? We brought back. But but um, this that old fucking chestnut. Literature. Yeah. So in honor of uh, colloquialism. Yes. In honor of St. Patrick's Day, I thought, hey, I, I've got you know three or four little. Trivia tidbits here, and even some weird news related to uh, to March and things like that there. But also, we just want to say thank you very much. If you're listening to this, it means you're a patron, and you have decided to sponsor us. Thank you so very much. Uh, it, without you guys, there's no point in doing this. You're literally fueling this conversation. Yes. And uh, it, every dollar goes to making the channel better or to supporting the local Las Vegas music scene. And, uh, yeah. How, Sean, how are you? Uh, as Carlin would say, I'm not unwell. Not unwell. I like to say I'm unbelievable. It covers me both ways. Oh, there you go. Yeah. We just finished recording a video uh, re- where we reviewed the Teeling Small Batch. And good stuff. Really good stuff. Um, I managed to somehow pick out two back-to-backs that he likes. And that's, that's not common. You know, I feel in general I come across as judgmental. You are knowledgeable. And I don't try to be judgmental. But I have had a lot of things, and I I have been fortunate enough to be able to try new and different things. Often. I'm familiar with my palate and what I like. And the way I like things done. So when something branches out, I try to be appreciative of that. But sometimes they're just offensive notes. I agree. And like I sometimes I, there's just too much dissonance. As we've gone on this journey together, I've discovered, you know, I, I'm learning what I really don't like in a whiskey or alcohol in general. In life. In, in life. But what, what what can you really just do without? I mean, what can you really just fucking do without? I could do without TV. To to me, TV is a luxury. I could do without a cell phone. I mean, granted, everything we do on social media for Room Six or for this podcast is well, on is cell what phones. I'm, is like, I'm not. I'm I'm kind of leaning the other way. Mm. I can. I can't do without movies. I need movies. I need to have sure. that media. Art in general. Art. The arts. Like, I, That's I, what I meant. I need yeah. all of them. I agree with I you. need books. I need, I need to be intellectually stimulated. I just, I fucking need that. And I can't go, I can't do another day without having that stimulation. That is a reason for me to get up in the morning. We, would, we never would have met without the arts. Right. And without social media. Right. You remember how we met? We wouldn't be able to continue doing this and to continue having conversations when we don't live in the same place anymore. 
because yep. inevitably life doesn't you don't do big things in life if you don't take big risks. Yes. And sometimes you just gotta fucking go with it. Uh, as Tom Cruise said in Risky Business, sometimes in life you just gotta say, what the fuck? Welcome to the podcast, by the way. <laughs> so, Sean. Oh, yeah, we get deep here, folks. We just jump <laughs> into it. So, Sean, a little St. Patrick's trivia for you. Yeah. Did you know that St. Patrick was not even born in Ireland? Okay. St. Patrick's name was not St. Patrick. He took the name Patrick, but his real name was Maywin Suckot. Okay. Am I boring you? No. Okay. Ow. Oh, my fucking God. No, my... Ow. You all right? Oh, was... someone oh, has... Oh, my jaw clicks. It's a big old click. Okay. My jaw just clicks sometimes, and I've moved. Oh. Want me to kick you square in the nuts? Wow. No, it just made me drool. <laughs> Jeez. Oh. Okay. Sorry, I thought it was, was I, I, I thought it was just me and the mood lighting. No, that was good. <clears throat> oh shit. <laughs> okay. Alright. Uh no, I I'm I'm with you there. There are times where like you'll get a really good pop of something in your body and you're just like It shifts your soul. You see like stars it, and you're just like Oh, I didn't know I needed that so bad. Yeah, stars, vapor trails. That's why I'm getting so... Vapor trails. The walls are melting. <laughs> right. Like, that's the, the fucking best part of stretching. And that's why I like DDP yoga so much. It's Can you fucking... explain what DDP yoga is for the people that... All right, so I had, this, I had this revelation the other day, and it almost led to a mental breakdown. <laughs> but in a great way. It was a revelation, and I got it, and I understand... <laughs> Where he's coming from now. Testify. But here's the thing. I know his business model. I don't want to fucking just put it out. Because it's the same business model for all of them. Beachbody, Shanti. Yeah. It's all... Look. It's a cult. Yeah. It's a cult. It's called a following. It's a cult. It's all a cult. Mm -hmm. And then we all have our little cults. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hello, but, whiskey. <laughs> but, but I mean... Stop with the stigma. Cult is just a following. Following is just a group. A group is just a gathering. Right. It's all... There's there's such a, a taboo around certain words. And it all needs to stop. It's adult language. We're speaking like adults. We shouldn't be offended every time someone says something with a little bit of further out-the-box thinking. That's, that's what... You do have to admit, though... The word cult has been appropriately applied to some very dangerous and messed up people. Yes, absolutely. And I just think it needs to continue to yeah. be associated with them. I think it's a word that needs to be taken seriously. But I, I, believe, la I believe language needs to be taken seriously. That is why I had a mental breakdown about when, when I heard that Merriam-Webster changed and altered the definition of literally. Oh no. What did they do? To also include it as an informal definition oh. meaning of great figurative measure. I can't I, I, I'm, I'm and literally that upset. Hurt, <laughs> it fucking hurt me. It hurt me because it That's... I had flashbacks to No Child Left Behind. I'm old yeah. enough to remember those days and what that did to our school system. Mm-hmm. Oh man, did it fuck us? Did it really ruin us? I, I'm old enough to remember Dare. We need to. Oh man, thank you, Dare, for teaching me about drugs. <laughs> <laughs> you taught me how to be a square for years, and I fucking hated you. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you know, oh, it, anti. It's the anti anything. It's taking that. It's taking that all or nothing. Mm. Only a Sith deals in absolutes, absolutes. right? Uh, well, I as a Jedi said it. I absolutely enjoy this whiskey. Hey, hey, ho ho! Happy Maywin Sakat Day. Maywin Sakat. That's the way the nerds say it. 
But to explain to you really quickly what DDP yoga is, yes. it is very, very slow calisthenics. What does DDP stand for? Diamond Dallas Page. That was his wrestling name. Yep. I wanted that out there. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he was he was a pro wrestler, and I was a fan of his growing up. He, was, he has a very specific market, and it's people that watch wrestling and know about the Monday Night Wars and WWE, or sorry, WWF versus WCW and ECW kind of sprinkled in there in Chicago. You were adorable in Philly and shit. <laughs> but, you know, there was also New Japan Pro Wrestling. There was Ring of Honor, and these all, these all little companies, like, Trying to trying to compete with the big boys in America, America always there's always that competition, mm-hmm. and then it's like everything got better than America, and America's like well, we've been telling ourselves that we're the best for our whole lives, and we we do anything, and we're the, all the best, and then guess what? We're fucking not. We're not the best mm-hmm. at anything. Not anymore. Not education. Not in healthcare. Not in Fucking anything that not how many people actually like where they live and like the life that they have and or would rather do their dream job. Can you imagine what society would be like if we just fucking well, said, "Hey, everyone gets a mulligan." Mulligan, but the, unfortunately, a lot of things wouldn't get done that have to get done in this world. They would if you would let the people that are trying to get to those jobs just get to those Nobody jobs. Nobody says, man, of, I, oh, I would give anything people, to work at Starbucks. Some <laughs> people, no, I'm saying, some people want to fucking make coffee, dude. Fair enough. Some people really want to do that. Some people really want to be trash men. Trash people. Sorry. Some people care about sanitation. Mm-hmm. Dude, like, there's a waiting list. That's, that's what the neat freaks, like, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, getting back to Diamond Dave and the yoga. Diamond Dallas. Page. Sorry, Diamond Dallas. Kind of Diamond Dave. His name's Dallas. Dallas. So it's yoga. It's uh, high intensity interval training. It's slow calisthenics. It is balance. It is core strength. And it's toning and realigning your body. It's yoga, but it's. Also, hit training. Okay. As in the high intensity when, interval training. Yeah, shadow boxing stuff. Mm hmm. You know, um, ultimately, the goal is to do everything in the splits. If you have true flexibility and control over your body, you should be able to do that. And In the front splits or the side splits? Yeah. Okay. All of it. Good luck. Yeah. You're 30. <laughs> Yeah, I know. And but it, this is this is my testament to this is why I want to be a teacher. And if I could fucking afford it, I would go back and get all of my credentials I need. But it's Can you do them online now? I don't know. The stuff I want to do is like Let me rephrase. Where would you go if you could? Uh Roberto Ben School of Guitar Lou Three for one. That was the school I couldn't think the name of. The place I wanted to go that my dad called Clown College. What? Really? Yeah. I told him I wanted to go and learn how to build guitars from Roberto Venn was the place to be when I was growing up. Where is it? Or is it still in Arizona or New Mexico, somewhere in the southwest. It's still in existence? I don't know. Oh. I don't know. It was a small place, but like some of the really big independent Builders now who are making stuff and selling stuff for five, six grand a piece. Nice. And and that's how they design their art or get that out. Like I would like to the only work I got to do with my hands like that was demo work on houses. Like I tore shit apart. Mm. I would like to create something like that. I think that'd be a cool experience. And then I would like to be able to teach someone how to do that if that's their passion. Well, I wish you luck with that, sir. Yeah. It's like the more I learn, the more I can teach. The more I can teach, the more positivity I can leave behind. I want that to be my legacy. Leave the earth better than I found it. 
There have been some. I've had should, some. I've had some bad teachers, man. Yeah, we should all strive for that. Um, I'm trying to finish writing a book on bad teaching, and man, it's not a pain in the ass to write. There's so much material. <laughs> ah, it's so hard. It's so hard. Just because I'm going through that right now with therapy. Well, can I teach you something else? Yeah, yeah. Hit me. Hit me all right. My best shot. Another little St. Patrick's Day trivia. The first St. Patrick's Day parade was not in Ireland, but in Boston. Of course it was. Because of course it was. Boston. Why? Why? Did, all right. That you know that's wait, not wait. really fucking teaching me anything when well, it's their on. goddamn identity. But maybe you all don't. Right? Maybe you don't know this. Uh-huh. Last one. There are more Americans of Irish origin than there are Irish in Ireland. We like <laughs> fuck. If, I was just going to say, like, how, how do you keep your, your, your culture alive? Ooh, Make the babies! <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, god damn. Uh, I need to, I really need You're part to, Irish, right? I really need to go through the, okay, so, the problem is, my mother sometimes forgets that I'm fucking adopted. <laughs> <laughs> so, as far as genealogy goes... I know nothing, and I would like to change that this year. So, you know, how, how expensive is the twenty three and me? I don't know. I don't know. And all the day, hold on, I heard something about Jews want your twenty three and me results, or that's why they have stock invested in them. Uh, oh man, it was a wild one. It was a wild, wild discussion. They're gonna make golems from you. Uh, <laughs> Oh man, it was quite a talk. I well, I am. I don't it was personally. A discussion that happened in the middle of the country. I will put it that way. Okay, so based on just what you know, what do you think you are, percentage wise of, of what? Oh, I have no fucking clue. Well, you're part English. I have no idea. Well, I could. I'm here to tell you. Oh. I can tell you're part English. All right. Okay. I'm a third English. Okay. I think you're part Irish. Right. Okay. I'm a third Irish. You might. I don't think you're part Scot. I'm not sure. Okay. But do uh, you know nothing about your birth parents um, or where you came from? I know I was born in uh, Medford, Oregon. Okay. And my birth mother's name was Sally. This smells like mint, dude. The yes, the whiskey. Yeah, the fucking hoot. Oh yeah, it's changing it's, again. It's just it's hitting me right in the nose with mint. Uh, you oh, might be so you good. might be part Scot because you you can pick out things, especially in Scotch, that I'm just like I have no idea where he's getting this from. But as soon as you say, I'm like, yeah, there it is. Um, I, I'm Irish, English, Scot, Canadian, and German. The sorry, Scotch Canadian is part of my heritage. Not I'm part Canadian because <laughs> nobody's like how how, how Canadian are you. <laughs> That's oh, like saying I'm, I'm part really American. Scared the Canadians are gonna get fucking outbred. <laughs> no, no. Oh, Canadians, y'all need to fuck more. Y'all are wonderful. Oh, they got the hockey best, players. The no, best the... things come out of Canada. Nice. The best, the absolute best. I know. Now, I I preach the good word of uh, my Lord and Savior Kevin Smith. <laughs> cool. Oh fuck! We'll cut this out, obviously. What? Uh, you know, hold on, it's on Patreon. Can we even monetize it because it's got someone else's... Oh, I just don't want to put that on there. Oh, okay. This, th- that part will be edited. Because you should see this. It's boom. <laughs> boom. Like, yeah, hey, great. We do want to hear your music. Thank you. <laughs> Fucking people. Oh, he's so salty. Uh, oh. Man, you know what? I have, I have become the patron saint of patience. Since fucking when? <laughs> the last five minutes? What? I'm just kidding. You man. know what I realize? I've lived with that for two years. Yeah. You know what happens when you go to the middle of the country and you sleep in a duplex that's off of a highway? Kinda. It's paved. It's the ocean. It sounds like the ocean. There's nothing out there. Yeah. But but fucking nature. Oh, I remember. We we lived literally out. You look out the back window, like there's the freeway going by, and it sounded like the ocean because I've slept near the ocean, and it sounds like just because the cars that kind of come and go in waves. And then you got that crap. 
So here's the thing. That, that is what I grew up with. That is what I, I dealt, I lived underneath um, where a, shall we say, urban fraternity would meet. And it was, the ceiling would shake and the popcorns would fall from the ceiling. It was boom, boom. And eventually, like, you know, it's the weekend. You can't, it's college. You can't say anything really because you're like, oh, I'll, okay. But I never actually went up and was like, hey, can I, hang can I, can I come party with you guys? Because I was, we've established I was a very late bloomer with that kind of thing. Um, but, hey, we have a question. I got it. Oh, I oh, got it. Go ahead. I believe that the constant noise like that is why I have tinnitus. Because I spent 17 years with that. And then I went to Oregon. And you know, mm -hmm. didn't have that problem. But I had a roommate who snored. <laughs> yeah, my wife had to sleep on the couch last night because of my snoring. And, and then, uh, tonight I'm drinking whiskey, so, you know. And then I went to... Um, I went to my grandmother's house and she snored. <laughs> like, all I'm looking for is a little fucking peace and quiet. The problem is when you get it, it's going to drive you nuts. It's too goddamn quiet. <laughs> no, or you're you're going to hear every no. bird, every <laughs> owl. <laughs> I don't want to be Ben that. Bailey did a bit. You know Ben Bailey? Cash cab guy? Yeah. He does stand up. He did a bit where he's like, so I, I, I bought a house in the countryside. And what I didn't realize was there's birds out there. And just as I was drifting <laughs> off to sleep, I hear, yeah. <laughs> What? Someone talking to me? Are you talking to me, Al? And finally, after a while, he, he gets, he realizes. That dude has anxiety, man. Oh, dude, he oh, so Jesus does. But he, he, he gets up and he closes the window. <laughs> and you can still hear it. <laughs> that was funny. He's like, so finally, I, I, I stayed awake all night. Until the owl fell asleep, and then I waited, and I got right up next to him, and I went, "Me, <laughs> me, you nosy owl." <laughs> oh, my dad told me that shit. Oh, wow. oh my god! Oh, thank you. Oh, I, I like stand up that tells a story like that that has uh, a build up and a turn. Oh, that was a good. Uh. Hey, speaking of, uh, oh man. Oh question for you. This is going to take us back. For those of you who don't know, listening to this, Sean was my very first interview on Room 6. He was the very first video. He helped me break in the channel uh, and, and helped me kind of figure out what how I wanted to do things. And I have a, I have a lot of behind the scenes. You do. And, um, and reaction right. stuff. Yes. Ideas. And also, we're coming up here. By the time this era, this podcast airs, We'll be past the two year mark of that episode. So, thanks, buddy. Yeah, Clink! And this leads perfectly into when I would interview people, I would always ask a question towards the end of the interview of each member of, that, of the band or whatever that I was interviewing about their dream gear. And we have a question from Diane from Summerlin What dream gear is just out of your reach? And has your dream gear changed over the years? Yeah. My dream gear has always changed because my interests have always changed. But now I'm at a place where fuck. <laughs> like my my definition of that now has has shifted to what would make my professional life easier that's my dream gear right now and that's probably okay is there anything that's just out of your reach I know that's what I'm, that's what I'm looking right. at it's like because obviously for me in the last two years my dream gear has changed from music related to video and lighting and yeah. audio related Yeah, and um now, my dream gear that's just out of way, I say just out of reach, mm. I don't think it'll ever happen, but I want a dedicated YouTube space. <laughs> I want some little spot in a warehouse or someplace where I can go and it's soundproof. 
I don't have to deal with cars driving by or anything. I don't have to deal with interruptions. I could go and say, bye, honey, bye, kid. I'm going for a day where I get paid to do, make content. That's, that is what is my dream gear is, is a space and a proper camera and uh, maybe, you know, and a, and a, 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 a production team. I assume. Oh. I want names. I want credits to have to, I, I want to have to roll credits at the end of each uh, video. <laughs> I watch videos that some of them are very well done. You can tell there's a team and at the end of every episode it says, you know, hosted by, written by, blah, 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 camera. And I want, oh, I want that. that. Yeah. And, yeah. and at the oh, same time. Fuck, yeah. That, okay. Yeah. yeah, shit. I would do, ooh. See, now I want to take, I want to do. I take, I take back what I said. I want to do all the people I find interesting. What do you mean? Because that would go fucking weird. That would go like Letterman, Obama, uh, to Matty Mathis and Brad Leone. Oh. God, to yeah. Philip DeFranco, Scott Steiner. Christopher Walken. <laughs> Christopher Walken, Robert De Niro. Oh, that's... Sean Evans. I think we should name Christopher Walken our patron saint. <laughs> oh, man. Mm. Like that, I've got a fucking diverse list, man. Yep. I, you, ooh, you give me the... Oh. You know who that, I'd like to that's, interview? That's my dream. Let me, let me give you the... I, let me give you the ideas that will bring in the views. Oh, I have such good ideas. All right, man. We'll talk. Like it's, you know where to find me. But you know who I'd like to interview? Oh. Just because of the... Who's on your list? Ice T. Oh, man. I almost don't want to give out the list. No, think about it. I, oh, well, man. Come on. Come oh, on. Oh, man. All right, you fuckers. You paid, you paid money <laughs> to hear this. All right. I'm giving you good shit. Oh, no. All right. Let's keep going. Ice T. Oh, Ice T. Because not only is a musician, mm-hmm. but he's also acting and he, the sex tapes and, <laughs> and just the whole his he's had one of those lives. And also, is that Ice T? That's lemonade, man. <laughs> the commercial, just all of it. Um, oh, really? Patrick Stewart, Ooh. Sir Patrick Stewart, uh, and Ian McCullen. Are we taking into it? Should we be taking into account? The fact that they may not be cool with us discussing this, or do we just say fuck it? Sometimes in life, you just gotta say fuck it. What the fuck? All right. Oh, all we're saying is we'd we'd like to interview them. That's all. Yeah, I have questions. I have questions. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I, I have believe, questions. I believe a lot of us have questions. Yeah. Um, you know what, Bernie Sanders. Oh, Bernie. Yeah. And I would, but I would like to interview him about nothing political. I would, I would like to hang out with him and talk, talk to him and just around. be like, "So, what did you do before politics? Were you was he in the military? What was you know what was dating like when you were you know a teenager?" I mean, 20? the thing is, he probably got tired of being interviewed about all this shit, and that's why he wrote a book. Fair enough. Isn't that why most people write books? Is because they're like, "I got to get all this down because I'm." I don't want to say it anymore. Or I don't want to forget. Yeah. But um, I would like to get Michael Jordan and Magic Johnson in the same room. Is Magic Johnson still alive? You're going too deep. Can't can't tell you. That's yeah, okay. But to answer your question, Diane. So I told you my dream gear is basically a dedicated space, and of course. A proper camera, a proper you know lighting rig, a pro a, a production crew. I would I would love. Oh my my dream gear is to have an editor. I send the stuff off to <laughs> and just be like, there you go, make gold out of that pile of crap. But you, what was your dream oh, gear? That's you know what I would I would even with that I would tell people to go support my brother Jake. He's an audio engineer. He does editing stuff. He knows people. He's connected. That's family. Mm-hmm. Keep it in the family. In sourcing, I would, I would talk. I would want more people to talk to him. I would want more people. Oh. Like, oh, but I would like that. Mo- oh, damn it! Because the thing is, yeah, I want my own fucking studio. I want a room. I want a room that's sound treated. I want a room where I can. 
fucking. You, you want the giant mixing board? And I don't. You know, I don't even need the giant mixing board. I you just, want your own? I'm so fucking easy. It's unbelievable. I am so fucking based in function. Like I just mm. want enough to get me by. To be and oh, the hard part is going to be getting all the fucking time and to get the knowledge and right. like, be paid to learn. Like the. That's the way we should be treating school is paying people to learn their trade so that they're knowledgeable in it. I, I agree, but, uh, you know. How fucking socialist of me. Damn you. Uh, uh, you know, that. I just, my, my dream gear is just enough to get by. Okay. Oh. Diane, I hope that answers your damn. question. <laughs> There you Our, go. We have changed in the last two years over yes, what we absolutely. really want. And thanks to COVID and the realities of not being in, you know, bands. I realize how much I have. I want the space. Right. So now, yeah, exactly. Like, you, your drum rig. I want the space to be able to put up all of my equipment. Like a home studio. Right. You have the luxury, actually. Of, you can turn the volume up on the drum set and, and play, crank the music, and you can hear everything, whereas I will most likely tick off. For domestic bliss, I need to ensure that nobody hears what I'm hearing, what I'm doing, except the tap, tap, tap of, of the electronic drum pads. But it's not the same. No, I mean, for what I... I want to be able to record, like... And I want to be able to teach You're, from, you're almost there with what you've got. From, and teach from home. You, you're there, man. You can, why, why, what's stopping you? I want to be able to set everything up. I want the room to be sound treated. Oh, gotcha. Right? I right. Want, you know, I want to be able to close all the doors so that I don't bother anybody else in the fucking house. Right. You know, I want to be able to close all the doors, have sound treatment up and all of my equipment out, and it'd be fucking humidified because I don't... Yeah. You know, the thing is, you buy gear and it should last a lifetime, and when the weather conditions, fuck it. And especially when you live in Nevada. It, it hurts, man. It just hurts. It's so dry. It's like, it really does kill gear. Yeah. And that's, oh, I wish club owners fucking realized that. I wish. Oh, don't get me started on venue owners. I'm so, no, this is it, man. This is the podcast to do it. Like, I wish I fucking, I wish people realized that musicians go through this shit. And this kind of stuff is essential for musicians. And I know it's fucking, it's dumb to say. But there's it's when one of go when ahead. everything starts breaking down. It's hard to get a fucking foothold in the start up of stuff. Yeah. Now that, now that the standard is so high. Yeah. And it's hard to feel like you're even competing, you know? Yeah. There's three things, three different I guess that's it. The, the fucking leg up. Yeah. You'll get well, you'll get there, buddy. Yeah, it's just it's gonna for be, me. It's like, gonna be resetting and in a new market. Yeah, but there's it, it seems to me there's three types of venues or venue owners, and each one has reasons for why they're that way. There's the venue that the venue owner that really cares about the music, but you know that that venue is not going to stay around forever because they're not bringing they're they're not making enough money to keep the doors open because they're either paying musicians. More than they can afford to pay them. That's what I was saying about it. I wish everybody would get a mulligan. Right. You actually build up fucking bars for musicians and bars for people that like music. And you build bars for people that just want to get drunk and listen to the same old tunes. Right. Everyone's happy. Everyone's happier. You just... Nobody's struggling. We moved into this room because it was going to be quieter. I know, but you know what? This is this is part of life, man. It's, it's being all good. Able, it's being all able nice. To adapt. It's all good. This is nice. Stretch. This is okay. Oh, this is so the, the other this is the cult mentality I was talking about with DDP yoga. Every time I'm like, oh, I'm just trying to be more flexible in life. Mm -hmm. I say that because it's a dad joke. Because I say more <laughs> flexible in meaning that I keep trying to get through this fucking program, right? But I don't hit everything every week. But I'm maintaining a schedule and I'm working through it. I'm, but I'm having to be flexible. And it shows. Uh, the, the other two types of venue owners are the one, there's the venue owner that only cares about the bottom line. And there's, we know, we know plenty of those. And all they care about is how many people did you bring and how much did they spend? And the, and 
Then there's the venue owner who only wants live music as background music because they're pulling in their money from gaming and from booze. And unfortunately, Vegas has plenty of them too because of gambling. So it, it's, it's tough. Yeah, but, oh, yeah. So I, ideally, if you're a working musician, you're playing a little bit of each. Or at the very least, you're playing enough of each that you can, uh, what's the word? Live. <laughs> right. Yeah. Survive. Yeah. This town is weird. It, it's weird for live musicians that, especially original musicians. Hey, Kansas City is very similar, my friend. Yeah, I know. It is. Um, I spent a long time, I spent longer there than I have here. Yeah. You know, I have learned. You know, their similarities run deep with that kind of, um, there's a scene of the struggling rock musician. Mm -hmm. And then there's guys that are good songwriters, but fucking assholes to work with. Well, yeah, we've, we've all known a lot of those guys. It's really hard to find the good ones. And I wish I would have spent more time. Like I would, mm -hmm. Going back, I would do two things. I would go back, I would do uh, culinary school, because mm -hmm. I would love to learn, really learn how to cook, and the history of food and things like that, and go back to school for, <clears throat> uh, and finish all of my music stuff, music and teaching and performance and that kind of stuff, and I would want to finish learning instruments. There's like, a question I, for I you. I would like to actually go through a program, but the problem is it's so fucking tightly structured. What is? Oh, the music program? Yeah, music programs. Mm -hmm. Like, it's so dense. It's such a dense schedule. Or at least it was for me. I know plenty of people who've gone through it, but it was just, I, there was so much I felt un underprepared for. And it was, I was, a, you know, like I said, I was a byproduct of the no child left behind bullshit. Mm-hmm. And that was fucking awful to the school system. Like, I think before everybody goes back to work, we just need an entire countrywide reform on some shit. Education's one of them. Well. We need to change how people teach and how people learn and who's teaching. Unfortunately, the people that make those kind of decisions are busy putting out a bunch of other dumpster fires. Right. And hopefully, hopefully not making things worse, but. Right. Hey man, amen to everything you just said. Uh, here's here's a question for you though. Pay teachers more. We need to pay healthcare workers more. Here's a question for you. Uh, I, I saw it online. I think on Facebook or whatever. Some ads for online culinary degrees. Is that something you'd be interested in, or you want to go? Right? You want to go to the school? And I want to. I want to do the thing in the class with the people. Like I've got a a very personable personality. Everybody loves you. No. No, everybody's not loved me, but I, I love myself. <laughs> it took me 30 fucking years to get to a place yeah. where I accept myself and I know who I am. I have a voice. And I realize there are consequences for what I say, but at the end of the day, I have to grow and move with every day. I have to be flexible and I have to adapt to the situation that's in hand. You know, some days... I didn't mean what I said, and some days I fucking did. And I feel everybody's that way. Everybody's wishy-washy. Because you know what? Everything's about context. And everything's about place of mind and intent. I agree. And speaking of... Fucking cancel culture. Jesus. <laughs> well, speaking of place of mind and intent... Yeah. It's time for weird news. Weird news. There's oh, weird God. things that have happened, and they're in the internet, and it's weird news! This uh, All right. Um. So, uh, this picture just, this. Why would you call it weird news? Just call it disappoint Sean. <laughs> picture this. Give him less faith in. Him. Oh come on. Picture this. Nineteen twenty-two. There's our other patron saint, Estelle Getty. Uh, no, actually, Sophia. <laughs> Pic so picture this. You're working with somebody, and you you feel like you know each other. You even both have, like, tattoos that are common to you, the region of the world that you're from. Come to find out you're related. 
two coworkers in a restaurant in Connecticut back in uh, 2013, I think. They both were like, they both realized, hey, we got a lot in common. They both had Dominican style tattoos. Both found they both knew they were adopted. Turns out they're sisters, and they didn't know this. There was a mix-up with the adoption paperwork. How how crazy is that, right? You know, <clears throat> you know the old adage, uh, everyone is a doppelganger, mm -hmm. and everyone you feel like someone has lived your life. I believe the statistic is there's six people that look just like you in the world. I I want to meet that that person. And both of you can just look at each other and say, I'm sorry. <laughs> I feel that every, that is so rooted in me as someone who's adopted. I've had that thought my entire life in the back of my head. Mm. That like, I'm adopted. What if there's someone out there who's exactly like me? Because I have joked my entire life that if I ever found another me, we would be unstoppable musically. Probably. We would just feed each other's musical ideas and it would be like, yeah, we want to add this for production and we can do this. And then you can go, like, oh man, if I had something to bounce off of. And then you can be the Nelsons. Holy shit. <laughs> oh man, I would want to do stand up with him. Oh, that'd be great. Do the fault, finish each other's sentence kind of thing. Oh man. Ask each other questions, but have no idea what each other's going to say. Nice. Um, yeah, that sounds like a great discussion. Speaking of uh, two two women, Florida. Oh man! Nope, women. Two Florida women, okay. age thirty four and forty four. Thank you for fixing the patriarchy in my yes, in my rooted in my vernacular. So two yeah. Florida women dressed up as grannies to try to get the second dose of the vaccine. No one knows how they were able to get the first one because in Florida at the time, you had to be 65 or older. And yet they both had fake vaccine cards saying that they were supposed to get the second dose with the right names with the wrong birth dates. And they were 34 and 44. They looked like they were in their 20s. And, uh, yeah. Like, what the fuck, Florida? You know what? I get it. I would, uh... But how did they get the first round? My stance is... Yeah. And I think I said this last time. Mm -hmm. With vaccines, right? Yep. Okay. So I won't go into it again. No, no, no. I'm agreeing with you with whatever you're going to say. Sorry. Right. Rub my eyes. I'm doing the uh-huh, uh-huh thing. Vaccine's good. Vaccine important. Vaccines cause adults. Yeah, more so uh, if you don't want the vaccine, then you can stay the fuck home. But they obviously did. They were willing to impersonate elderly people. You know what? And cool. Good. It's It sounds if illegal. If you don't want the vaccine, yeah. you don't get to be a functioning member of society. The thing is... We the, have a vaccine out. Mm -hmm. Fucking take it. The thing is, we know that there's limited supplies... They're stealing vaccines that need to go to someone who's over 65 right. that needs it much more right, than them. because people are desperate and people are scared. And that's what they got yelled at but by the fine, cops. <laughs> be scared for a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's fear. It is temporary. It's Florida. You, you should be used to it. it. Yeah. You get through it. I feel like Florida is the Australia of the United States. Everything there wants to kill you. You know, as my mother, as much as I don't like quoting my mother... I'm doing it now as an adult. Like, uh, I am. I am a oh, yeah. product of my my nurture and nature. Yeah, that this, you're at, you're at that age where you start really like, holy crap, Oh, uh, <laughs> crap, and it's not even oh she was right or oh he was right. It's that's 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 pure mom right there. What everything I just said. Uh, 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 everybody but, needs to take a chill pill, right? Um, you you, <laughs> you feel like you're up for one more weird news tidbit. All right, hit me with your best shot. Speaking of things that are illegal, or at least should be illegal. Plastic surgeon has to be on a video call mm -hmm. for court. Mm -hmm. Okay? You heard this one? <coughs> yeah. You have heard this one? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, for those, yeah. 
those of you who haven't heard it. He's got to call in for a traffic ticket. No. Uh, he was calling in for some something. He's calling in for a traffic ticket. Doing surgery while he's on the call. He's in scrubs. And the judge is like, um, are you in the OR right now? He's like, yeah. Yeah, I'm in the operating room, but don't worry about it. We've got another surgeon right here. He can deal with things while I ask questions. And they're like, um. Yeah, that's probably a HIPAA violation. Oh, yeah. needless to say. Uh, probably. The I'm medical association. The, yeah, the appropriate medical association, association is like, we're going to be looking into how he takes care of his patients. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would be pissed if I was the patient, and I'm like, "Can you focus on me, the person who you're inside right now?" Yeah, that was that was funny. That's all the weird news I have. So, Sean, yeah, um, you know, my dad mm-hmm. uh, worked in radiology and did X-rays for. Uh, what do my mom say? She said 50 years. 20 years. <laughs> said 50. 50, wow. That's a long time. She said 50. Yeah. It is one of those, uh... Like he was, so- and here's the thing. The man was on call through the cancer that had eaten away at him. And they would call him in to work on the machines because... Fucking kids were were assholes who thought they knew more than him, and they were a little ageist. Suffice it to say, mm-hmm. there's a touch of ageism in that generation underneath mine, and it's not appreciated. Knock it off. Hmm. But uh, the man was on call, like up until the end. But he. He did not breed an anti-vaxxer, I will tell you that. Yeah. I rebelled against my family in a lot of ways. That medicine, not one of them. Medicine is science, and science is fact. And you know what? New data, new decisions. Yeah, that's one of the things I like about science is science is never afraid to say, oh. We got this wrong, but now we have to pivot because we have a new focus. Like, oh, okay, you can be upset that something happened, but you know what? We have to fucking, we have to move at a pace that's faster than this. Dogma is not science. We don't have time Mm -hmm. to be upset right now. We have to make progress. Progress in the name of your feelings. Yeah. Facts over feelings. Yep, and emptiness is loneliness. And loneliness. Facts over feelings. Shout out to Philip DeFranco. (laughs) I was trying to quote Smash the Pumpkins, but I messed up. Uh, I actually wanted to be, for a brief period of my life, one of the, when I was in the, you know, what do I want to do with my life hey, you know phase? What? There are going to be some freaks that listen to this for the knuckle popping. Hey, ASMR. Right, yeah. Uh, but I, I wanted to be a radiologist briefly, because I was like, oh, it's short degree, it's two years or something like that. Yeah. And it starts at 40 grand or whatever it was. And, and Ooh, yeah, it but, started. But... You get tenure through a hospital, though. But then I heard about echocardiography, which is the ultrasound echoes of the heart. Yeah. And I thought, ooh, that sounds cool. But then I found out just how much math I would need. And at the time in my life, me and math were not friends. No, and that's the thing. The school system Mm -hmm. fucked up. How we associate learning. This is why when I talk about education reform, uh, this is the podcast I wanted to do this on. There you go. Uh, When I talked about education reform, I meant from the top to the bottom. I meant an entire structural reformation. Many things need to be restructured from the top to the bottom. Pay teachers what they deserve to be paid. Mm. Put students into classes with interests that they have. Right? Some kids are good with numbers and like math and appreciate the 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 rigidity of that. You know, uh, uh, imitation game. Mm-hmm. Like some people really enjoy the the they get a catharsis through it. Some people really like solving puzzles. Some people want to explore and travel, so you make those people cartographers, and, right. and you start looking through our planet, and you start putting care into our planet, right? You yeah. start 
We're talking mm. about global reformation. That's what I mean about education reform. You go down to the root of education. You're reminding me of a TikTok I saw today. Yes, I realize. That's like saying, I saw I a thing on... T- I, sorry, I don't watch TikTok. I saw a thing on Wikipedia today. The TikToks but, I get are through uh, the uh, Tom Segura and Christina Pazitsky podcast, yeah, your mom's house. But, so, uh, here's the deal. A uh, young lady was like, y'all, we need to fix this planet because apparently the women in my family, she had one grandma uh, who died at like 94, mm. another one died at 91, but her twin sister is now 110. She's like, I'm going to be here a while. We need to fix this. Mm. I was like, yeah, that's, that's what it boils down to. Is hopefully... We're going to be a while. We're going to be here a while as medicine progresses and genes you know, get... And we need to stop with the aversion to science. We just need to knock this shit off. Yeah. We need to realize that facts matter more than feelings. You can be upset that you're wrong, but you're fucking wrong at the end of the day. And you need to stop it. This petulance, this fucking petulant attitude. This... Well, unfortunately, it boils down to at some point, oh. somebody taught somebody that how to, you know, that that's the way they should feel and right. it should be. You should and then they pass it on. You grow as a person. Be, right. I always teach you who you are. This is what I taught you. You remember what I taught you. Well, it's easy to point. I'm sorry to take on a fucking voice, but it's a voice. Yeah. It's easy to point at a generation or a particular group of, you know, like, Oh, well, the boomers, or oh, well, Gen X, or whatever. The problem is, as I get older, I recognize every generation in every state and every country has idiots, has anti-vaxxers, has science deniers. There are certain pockets where you're like, oh, well, now you're reinforcing the stereotype. Good job. (laughs) But, man, that's... You just, you know what? Here's the thing. If you let the people come to America, the real America. Oh, we're switching to immigration? Okay. I'm, I'm saying, if you want, if the American dream, right? Right. You let the people come to America that wanted to come to America. And you let the people live here who want to live here. But, tough shit. We're about progress because we've always been about progress. We, we're about changing because we've always been a melting pot. We mm-hmm. came over here because we wanted to avoid persecution. And we don't want to be persecuted anymore by a minority. And the minority are the dumb rebels who think that we need to leave. Well, we have a stronger foothold and we want to appreciate the culture that's here. We want to change society and change... Like, there is a whole demographic of people that want the best And if you don't want the best out of all of us, then frankly, we don't need you. Yeah. And the simplistic way of looking at history is that, oh, well, the Puritans who were escaping religious persecution came over here and decided, hey, people who are here already, this is our land now and we're taking everything and blah, blah, blah. There's more to it than that, I know. Yeah. History books only have so much room. Guess what? White people fucked up. They did, but... a lot. Areas. I agree. A lot. I agree. I am not apologizing. Like that's. Uh, let me, no, I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> I'm apolo- I am very apologetic for what my ancestors have done, uh, and my contemporaries. Unfortunately, I didn't mean I'm not apologizing. What I meant to say was, I am not saying they didn't. I'm just saying that it's not just white people. No, it's not. But I've lived a lot of places. Man. Same. And wherever you go, you meet the same people. I've I've discovered or I've figured out. I have known someone like you in my life. I have known someone like other people that we know together in my life. You meet the same type of people, and if you're observant enough, you learn to okay. When I'm with this type of person, how many types of people are there? A lot. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
And just when you think you got a beat on individuals, just like everybody else. Yes, we are all individuals. (laughs) Um, But we're all unique snowflakes. Yes, but no, as I've living with roommates and living with uh, people in symmetric, living with partners, live you know, and it working in many places, uh, managing people, being managed by people, like you, you start noticing. there's a lot of people that are the same. I'm, I'm meeting the same people, and if I if I figure out, okay, this type of person, they respond best to this situation mm. or this uh, this uh, approach, and I use that approach, and then tailor tweak it for that particular person if there's some outlier things. But it becomes this almost uh, a clinical study in like, oh, okay, I I get you. I, I know how to approach you when X, Y, Z happens or when I need X, Y, Z to happen. Here's how I get what I want from you. And it's something I've tried to teach my 13 year old daughter is how to be flexible with different types of people, how to be like, okay. And, and it, you know, we all get there. Like, okay, well, I have my friends and I'm, I'm one Josh with my friends and I'm a totally different Josh with my friend's parents <laughs> and I'm totally different Josh with, people I work with and people that I, you know, know that work at a particular store I go to. Like that's, we only know each other because of the client or the customer and, you know, shop owner relationship, but I'm a different person with them than I am with you or than I am with, you know, my mom or, you know, that you run into the same people. And as you run into new types of people, you can file it away and say, okay, there's there's another template that I can I can apply in this situation. I don't know if that makes any sense, but yeah, it does. I follow you. Right on. That's, all I'm saying is be flexible. And it's what you said. Don't be afraid of silence. Science, because science is flexible. Be flexible. Be adaptable. Don't be afraid of change. Don't be afraid to change. And remember to be amazing. Are we at that time? We're at that time, no, sir. No, we're not. Yeah, we are. Get out of here. I don't believe it. We're just about an hour, 59 minutes. We, we're we there, man. Right. I want to say happy Easter. If you don't celebrate Easter, happy Ostara. If you don't celebrate Ostara. I mean, I can, I can go for Happy it. March 17th. We got a whole other podcast episode, buddy. Oh, we do? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Not Easter. Sorry. We're, the next one you'll hear will be the Easter episode. This is the St. Patrick's Day. What I meant to say was, let's all get pissed. <laughs> Want to thank Sean for be, being my Paul Cash partner. Yeah, man. No, and, I poured another drink. I was like, "Yeah, let's go." Yeah, I'm, and I'm we even oh, we're we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna continue this bottle on another podcast episode because that's how we do. Want to thank you, patrons. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, I, I hope this did something for you. I hope this sparked a train of thought that ultimately left left you with a sense of positivity because that's what I want. To here, here. Uh, if you have, if you're looking for a good Irish whiskey, you got forty bucks to spend it. Teeling small batch. That's T E E L I N G. Uh, it'll be in the show notes. And uh, what else? Oh yeah, there's also a link in the show notes. If you want to support us in other ways? By all means. Um, remember to be amazing, and uh, we'll catch you next time on Two Brains One Bottle, and hopefully over in Room Six. Ba da ba ba da boom.